If you take the field of natural language processing, the foundation models are quite advanced in that if you use the features from these foundation models for a task like, say, translation, the model is bound to do far better than a model that's trained specifically for translation itself. This is mainly because the foundation models are trained with data at scale, harnessing all the text data on the web. But when it comes to images, the story is different because we don't have depth masks or segmentation masks lying around on the web. One way to solve this could be with text guidance. For example, we can use the hashtags from a platform like, say, Instagram, or use the metadata of images and use these as training labels. But there's a specific relationships, actions, or emotions, and a lot more going on in a single image. So a different way to tackle this problem could be to use self-supervised learning and use images both at the input and at the output. This idea has revolved around a small data set called ImageNet 1K. So the obvious question here is, how can we scale this self-supervised learning? The Dino V2 is the answer, and it bets on building a huge training data set by curating existing data sets and using retrieved images from raw sources using automated pipeline from an uncurated set of images. In this video, let's learn about the pipeline, the Dino V2. <laughs> data processing pipeline, which is the main contribution of the paper. The aim of this pipeline is to get quality training data at scale. This is the figure from the paper, and there are two sources of data for this pipeline, which are curated data set and uncurated data set. Curated data set, as the name implies, is built by combining pre-existing standard data sets. This table shows all the pre-existing standard datasets that have been used by them to form the curated dataset. The source tasks are classification, fine-grained classification, depth estimation, and image segmentation. The uncurated dataset was indeed gathered by web crawling for image tags and consists of raw data. At the beginning of the pipeline, the uncurated dataset had 1.3 billion images. As the first step, these uncurated raw images go through a deduplication process using what is called a copy detection pipeline based on this paper, a self-supervised descriptor for image copy detection, which in turn is built on top of SIM CLR and remove near duplicate images. For this process, for a given image, they first extract embeddings using a neural network, which results in vectors that are much lower in dimension. And these vectors are much easier to deal with when you're doing things like clustering or retrieval. For example, you can find similarity between images very easily using vectors rather than using images. So in this step, they do exactly that. They do a k nearest neighbor with k equal to 64 for each image. And in each connected component, they keep only one representative image and discard the rest, thereby resulting in a 744 million images. They then use retrieval to find images similar to a given image in the curated dataset. More specifically, they use two types of similarity, namely sample-based similarity and 
cluster-based similarity. For both the types, they use quasine similarity to measure the similarities. For the sample-based, they sample K uncurated images nearest to a given curated image and include those that are more than a similarity threshold and discard the rest. They use K equal to 4 and K equal to 32 in the process. Then there's a cluster-based retrieval where they cluster the uncurated data into different clusters and from each cluster they sample 10,000 images and discard the rest. After doing these steps, by the end of the retrieval process, the resulting data set had 142 million images, resulting in the LVD 142 million images data set. Beyond that pipeline, to generate the training data set, Dino V2, is a series of improvements to Dino V1. I have done a separate video on Dino V1, but just for completion, let me brief here. So Dino stands for self-distillation with no labels. We start the training with two variations, X1 and X2, of the same image X, and pass it through separate student and teacher networks whose architecture is the same, but we train them differently. When I say differently, we train the student network with the cross entropy loss. However, there's a stop gradient preventing the training of the teacher network with the same loss. But the teacher network is updated with the exponential moving average from the student network. We can call this training as having image level objective because we use the entire image for training. The first improvement over Dino V1 is to introduce patch level objective from iBot. Given an input image X, we now extract two views U and V and for each view we extract patches instead of working with the entire image. We introduce two losses namely cross view token loss which is the same as cross entropy in Dino V1, but this time we pass masked patches to the student and pass the unmasked patches to the teacher network. It's somewhat like the teacher sees all the information, but as the student is learning, the student has to guess the missing pieces of the puzzle. Now the second loss is the masked image modeling loss between the masked and unmasked outputs from the student and teacher respectively. In addition to the patchwise objective, they also introduce a new regularization called co regularization to the loss. To understand co regularization, let's take a look at this figure. Like all other regularizations, it has a parameter lambda. By increasing the parameter lambda, the features can be made to spread across the manifold compared to the input. Now, in our problem, because we extract patches to work with, if you take a batch of, say, four images and their corresponding mask tokens, the masking shown in blue here may not be distributed well enough in the batch. The mass may be distributed, let's say, somewhere at the center or at the top or even at the bottom. To overcome this, Colio regularization introduces uniform spanning of the masks across the input and across a given batch of inputs. In this example, the batch size is four. As a last additional improvement, they also increase the resolution of the training images to 518 by 518. And they do this just towards the end of the pre-training. Now that we know 
we train with the Masio training data set and some improvements to Dyna v1, we also have to make sure that the implementation is quite efficient. The first step towards improving the efficiency is to use flash attention instead of the standard attention in the self-attention layers. The next step would be to introduce nested tensors in order to process the global crops and the local crops of the image together rather than process them separately. They've also leveraged the fully sharded data processing parallel operation available in PyTorch 2.0. And lastly, they've also used model distillation to distill the very large VITG to a smaller model, say VITL. With all these shiny new improvements, the results do indeed look impressive with Dino V2. And it performs better than iBot in segmentation in every single data set. When it comes to depth estimation, it once again outperforms iBot in quite common data sets like Kitty and NYUD. Lastly, there are some qualitative outputs for segmentation and depth estimation, and they all indicate very good performance indeed. So that was Dino V2, guys. I hope you enjoyed and got some value out of it. I will see you in my next video. Till then, bye.